We are now presented with a new business challenge. With the multiplicity of stacks, static website, user databases, analytic databases, API endpoint, and so on, do services and apps interact appropriately? Added to that is the multiplicity of hardware environments, development VM, QA server, public cloud, production servers, etc. How can you be sure you can migrate smoothly and quickly? To answer this challenge, we must look towards containers. Using virtualization, each virtual machine includes not only the app binary, but the entire operating system, guest OS, and necessary libraries, which may weigh tens of gigabytes. With containers, each container contains only the necessary application binary and its dependent libraries, which may weigh tens of megabytes. The operating system is shared by all containers. The first thing to do is to understand containers. Each container has its own network interface and IP address, its own file system, isolation, security, container A and B can't harm or even see each other, and uses Linux kernel's namespaces for this, and isolation, resource usage, soft and hard quotas for CPU, RAM, and I.O., and uses Linux kernel C groups for this. So why containers? Containers are two times faster than lightweight VMs based on standard Linux features. Containers provide better performance, better efficiency, better agility, and are more application friendly. When you compare Docker versus LXC by Linux, you can see the vast overwhelming difference. The Docker engine is responsible for managing networking, images, containers, volumes, plugins, orchestration, etc. You simply install Docker Engine on your laptops and servers. Images are made up of multiple read-only layers, while containers are a thin read-write layer on top. The layers are shared by multiple images and use various storage drives such as AUFS, Device Mapper, BTRFS, Overlay, Overlay2, and ZFS. We start with a base Docker image and then run our Docker file, which contains instructions. Examples of the instructions are to run commands, add file or folder, define env variables, define processes to run, and to set entry points. After these instructions are executed, we now have a new Docker image. This process is achieved by running the following command. The image registry is a distribution component of Docker. It can be private or public. You have the option of choosing between mobility and performance, using local storage to host your container, or using a distributed shared storage, which increases your volume by using storage such as NAS, SAN, Cloud, or SDS. There are built-in network drivers that come included with Docker Engine, and there are also plug-in network drivers offered by networking vendors and the community. The most commonly used built-in network drivers are Bridge, Overlay, and Mac VLAN. Together, they cover a very broad list of networking use cases and environments. The Docker client can be on the same or different host as the daemon. They communicate over sockets or REST APIs. Using the right orchestration for your containers is crucial. Orchestration provides you scheduling, you decide where your containers should run, lifecycle and health, keep your containers running despite failures, scaling, make sets of containers bigger or smaller, naming and discovery, find where your containers are now, load balancing, distribute traffic across a set of containers, storage volumes, provide data to containers, logging and monitoring, track what's happening with your containers, debugging and introspection, enter or attach to containers, and identity and authorization, control who can do things to your containers. There are many different orchestrator options, Kubernetes, Swarm, Rancher, Mesos, and more. Kubernetes provides cluster management at scale, as well as manages container runtime across different hosts. Using Red Hat OpenShift, you get all the power of Kubernetes plus application management, CICD components, tenancy, and RBAC, and UI. OpenShift runs on your choice of infrastructure, the nodes are instances of RHEL where applications will run. Application services run in Docker's containers, distributed across your nodes. And pods bundle one or more Docker containers as a single unit. 
These pods are a small group of containers and volumes. They are tightly coupled. They are the atom of replication and placement. These pods are the logical hosts for containers since each pod gets an IP address and share the data such as local host, volumes, IPC, and more. The pods facilitates composite applications. They mix and match components, languages, and preserves one-to-one -one app to image. An example would be a data puller and a web server. Pods are ephemeral and stateless, and volumes bring persistence to pods. K8's volumes are similar to Docker volumes, but managed differently. All containers in a pod can access the volume, and the volumes are associated with the lifecycle of the pod. Persistent volume, or PV, is networked storage in the cluster provisioned by an administrator. Persistent volume claim, or PVC, is storage resource requested by a user. Storage class are types of supported storage profiles offered by administrators. Masters drive Kubernetes to orchestrate nodes and applications. A master provides an API for authenticated users and clients. While registries store images and versions for provisioning, the Kubernetes controller manages the lifecycle for each pod. And services allow related pods to connect to one another. These services are a group of pods that work together, grouped by a label selector. Services publishes how to access the service, whether it be DNS name, DNS SRV records for ports, or Kubernetes Endpoints API. They also define access policy. They are load balanced, name maps to stable virtual IP and headless, name maps to set of pod IPs. Services hides complexity, which is ideal for non-native apps. They are decoupled from pods and replication controllers. A software-defined network, or SDN layer, routes external application requests to the desired pods. Docker and OpenShift allows for migration to move smoothly and quickly. Thank you for watching this video. For more videos, please subscribe to the CA Educate channel on YouTube. For more detailed information about CA Digital Operational Intelligence, click the information bubble in the top right corner to load the product page. From there, you can visit product documentation, get support, view the communities, or see the learning paths.